There was a king who liked nothing better than to disguise himself and make his way through the streets of his city listening to what his people had to say. One day, as he did so, he found himself in the slum, in the street of the Jews, and there he heard music. Surely, he thought, the music I would hear in such a place would be a, a lament, a song full of misery. But no, the song was filled with vigour and life. went to the door. Is a stranger welcome here? Strangers are a gift from God, came the reply. Enter, please. When the king went in, he found within the shack one piece of furniture, a wooden crate upon which sat a little man. The little man jumped down and eagerly he brushed the dust off the top of the crate. Please sit. The little man sat on the floor. The king upon the crate, tell me, how do you make your way in the world? I mend shoes. Is that so? said the king. Where is your shop? My shop? said the little man. I can't afford a shop. No, I, I drag the crate you're sitting on. It's full of my tools. Out to beside the road. and People come with shoes to mend. You mend your shoes by the side of the road? said the king. Does this pay you well? In a manner of speaking, said the little man. It pays me... Enough to buy one meal each day. One meal, said the king. Well, but what about tomorrow? Bah, tomorrow. Tomorrow is greedy, said the little man. I live my life one day at a time. That night, the king, as he lay in his luxurious palace, he turned this thought over and over into his head. Is it possible to live one day at a time? I will test him. So the king sent guards out into the streets of the city the following morning. All of them declared a proclamation. If anyone wants to mend shoes by the side of the road, they must first buy a permit for 50 gold pieces. That night, the king in his disguise, he crept down to the same house. Hmm, if he's playing music, I bet he's changed his tune. But when the king listened, he heard... The king thought, how odd. The music is, is still so full of life and defiance and vigour. king went to the door and knocked. This time the little man welcomed him as if the king were a long-lost brother. Tell me, said the king, when I heard of our ruler's ridiculous proclamation, I was worried on your behalf. How did you manage? Did you earn any money at all today? When I heard, said the cobbler, that I was no longer able to make my living in the way that I had done so for so many years, at first I was angry, but then I thought, ah, something will come along, and do you know, at that moment, it did. It did come along. A group of people passed by my hut. I said, where are you going? They answered, into the forest to gather wood to sell as kindling at market. Can I come with you? Of course, they said. There's a whole forest out there. So I went with them and I sold enough kindling at market to buy one meal. Yes, yeah, said the king, but what about tomorrow? Bah, tomorrow. Tomorrow is greedy. I live one day at a time. That night the king lay in his bed. Aha! 
Next morning, another proclamation. Anyone found gathering wood in the forest will be made to join the king's army, and they will not be paid for forty days. That night, the king disguised himself. He thought, I'm sure the music will be different, but when he listened, he heard... of life and rapture. The king went to the hut. He was welcomed in. Well, huh, they made me join the army. They made me wear a uniform. Wear a sword in a scabbard, march up and down, and they're not going to pay me for forty days. How will you manage, said the king. Have you eaten today? Well, said the cobbler, I looked at the sword. I looked at the blade hidden by the scabbard, and I thought the metal of that blade must be worth something. So I sold the metal to buy myself a meal and replaced it with a blade of wood. You see, no one can tell. But what, said the king, if, if tomorrow there is a sword inspection? Bah, tomorrow. Tomorrow is greedy. I live my life one day at a time. Next morning, the king instructed his sergeant to muster the army. The king made his way up onto the balcony, and from behind a pillar he watched the market square below. As the army gathered stood in line as instructed the sergeant fetched out of the prison a criminal his arms and legs wrapped in chains he was made to kneel by the chopping block then as instructed the sergeant marched across you the cobbler stepped forward come with me you see this prisoner he has committed a dreadful crime he must be executed take your sword and cut off his head. What? said the cobbler. I am an observant Jew. I cannot take another life. That would be murder to me. You must, said the sergeant. Either you cut off his head, or your life will end today, as well as his. The cobbler looked about at the crowd that had gathered to watch the execution. As God is my witness, this prisoner has committed no crime other than to anger our king. Listen to me now. If he is a criminal, let my sword be as always. If, however, he is innocent, let the blade of my sword be turned to wood. And he drew the sword and held it aloft. Everyone, when they saw the miracle, they dropped to their knees, they gasped. The king made his way out of the palace, across the square. All of his army dropped to their knees, save for the cobbler, who stared in astonishment. The king took the cobbler's hand. Yes, I am the stranger who came to your home, whom you welcomed so warmly. Now it is time for me to welcome you into mine. Come with me. Live with me. Help me. Teach me. To live as you live. To live one day at a time.